Hello from Jonathan and from me, welcome to the programme. First tonight, there are warnings today that the price of petrol in our region is set to reach record highs. The AA are warning that a litre of fuel could top a record £1.20 by Easter. And they're calling on the government to investigate this sudden surge. Well, it comes as one of our region's police forces have reported a spate of fuel thefts. Our correspondent, Rhiannon Mills, joins us now from Bedford. Rhiannon. Well, Jonathan, if you were here in Bromham, just outside Bedford tonight, filling up your car, it's going to cost you around 118 a litre. Sound expensive? Well, according to the AA, it looks like we're going to be paying a lot more in the next few months, over 120 a litre. Today, I've been catching up with some drivers who've said it's like daylight robbery. I've also met up with some others who've seen the true cost of their fuel. We're all used to hiding our sat-navs, locking our cars, but have you ever thought about protecting your petrol? On Waterloo Road in Bedford, nine cars had their fuel taken in just one night, all drained through a hole drilled in their petrol tanks. Nigel Brooks's wife's car was one of them. My wife managed to get halfway to work and then her car broke down, having not realised there was a leak. Um, other cars in the road, there was petrol on the road and therefore there was qu quite a smell um, and they had to come along and sand the roads and obviously a lot of cars were not drivable from the time that they were um, affected, so big disruption really. With fuel now costing nearly £5 a gallon, it's not surprising that it's become a target. Today the AA called for a freeze on fuel duty. We will have record prices at the pumps at a time when we really don't need it because as an economy, we're dependent on the road infrastructure for getting goods to the shops, goods to the ports, goods to market. And indeed, the vast majority of people in East Anglia depend on their cars for getting around. Back in 1979, there was outrage when it jumped to one pound a gallon. Today, drivers are having to shell out a lot more than that. An average family with two cars is already spending £52 more a month on fuel compared to last year. At the moment, the average price is around 115 a litre. From next month, that could go up to 120, partly thanks to a threepence rise in petrol duty. So today, a journey from Corby to Clacton would cost me around £15.71. pence. If I did it next month, it could potentially cost me £16.63. That's nearly an extra pound for that 100 miles. Drivers that I spoke to today were already noticing a big rise. It's absolutely terrible. In the past few weeks, it's gone up by two pence in the two weeks. I used to put £10 for the petrol and get about sort of 90 miles. I get about 44 miles now, so it really has made quite a difference. I think the government could do something about it. I think it's too much taxes. We pay more taxes than anybody other, other countries. I think they could help. At one petrol station in Norwich, you will still get fuel for 110. That's if you can get there in time. I've got some customers regularly come from Sheringham and all over Norfolk because they know we are the one of the cheapest places in the centre of the city. Nigel has never paid so much for a tank of fuel. It cost a thousand pounds to get his wife's car fixed. And with prices continuing to rise right across our region, he's not the only one who will be thinking more carefully next time he has to fill up. It is incredible when you think there was so much fuss back in 1979 when we were paying one pound a gallon. Of course, we're now paying five times that. Uh, today, the cheapest fuel that we found was that 110 a litre in Norwich. The highest was 119 around the New Markets area. Now, the AA have said that the prices that we're paying at the moment are the same prices that we were paying back in the boom period, back in 2008. Back then, people were already struggling to uh, pay that amount for fuel. Now, following the recession, people are going to find it even harder, which means we're really going to have to think very carefully about whether to take those extra extra journeys or not. Absolutely right there, Viran, and thank you very much for that. Now, in other news, a soldier from the 1st Battalion, the Royal Anglian Regiment, has died almost a month after being injured in an explosion in Afghanistan. The soldier, who hasn't yet been named, died in the military wing of Selly Oak Hospital in Birmingham after being injured in Musakala on the 21st of February. He's the 273rd British soldier to die in the conflict. His family have been informed.
next tonight. Another celebrity has joined the battle to become the new MP for Luton South at this year's general election. Stephen Rhodes, a presenter on the BBC radio station that covers the town, announced today he's planning to stand as an independent candidate. TV star Esther Ranson is already fighting the seat. So is there a danger the campaign could become little more than a media circus? Neil Bradford has been finding out. Never did. So you don't know what I do or what I stand for. His voice may be familiar to the people of Luton, even if his face isn't. As a presenter on BBC Three Counties Radio, Stephen Rhodes is more used to doing the interviews. Today, I was interviewing him about his desire to become the next independent MP for Luton South. Very often when we're interviewing politicians, we think I could do that job, and lots of my listeners think the very same thing. And being a bit of a megalomaniac, really, when you consider the way I used to work on my consumer programme, if I saw a bit of a problem, I'd be itching to sort it out. Now, looking at Luton South, looking at Luton full stop, it's got some real problems. The 59-year-old Irishman, who's worked at the Luton radio station for 15 years, will go head-to-head -head with former That's Life presenter Esther Ranson move which appears to have upset the veteran broadcaster. She describes the constituency as a crowded race and questions whether it's too late for Mr Rhodes to be throwing his hat into the ring. Other candidates welcome his decision to stand. In a democracy, everyone has a right to stand in, uh, for any position they want. At the end of the day, it's up to the people who they want to see as their uh, representative of the parliament. It's a fascinating campaign. It's no surprise to me that so many people are queuing up to stand in Luton South. It's a fantastic place and I should know I've lived here almost all my life. While the rest of the country is having a good debate on the political issues of the day, that in, in Luton instead it'll be Esther Ranson, it'll be Margaret Moran, it'll be Stephen Rhodes and it'll be all sorts of issues that are interesting and good media coverage but they're not going to impact people's day-to-day -day lives. There was little comment from the BBC today. They simply confirmed Mr Rhodes no longer works for the corporation. The presenter's resignation was accepted with immediate effect. It means he won't present tomorrow's breakfast show. But a source hinted that there may be a chance he could return to the airwaves if his attempt to become Luton South MP is unsuccessful. Her books top the bestseller list. Stephen Rhodes has previously stood in for Richard Maidley on ITV1's This Morning programme and has been the voice on many ITV quiz show. That was more than 15 years ago and judging by the response from people we spoke to today, his profile in Luton could do with a boost. Never heard of him. Who is he anyway? Oh, I know Three Counties Radio but not Stephen Rhodes. Oh yes, um, Three Counties. Yeah. Stephen Rhodes presented his last breakfast show this morning. The next time he appears on the radio, he says it will be as a candidate in what could be one of the most exciting places of the election. Neil Bradford, Anglia News, Luton South. Now, all